In the book of Judges, the 16th chapter beginning, at the at the fourth verse. And what I'll probably do is post that video on the board on, on Facebook. It's just a little excerpt. Um, but we're going to be looking at the anatomy of sin seduction. The anatomy, the breakdown of sin seduction. Um, the, the scripture text in Judges, the 16th chapter and the 4th verse, uh, I'm going to read it and you follow with me in your Bible. And it, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him. The person that they're making reference to is Samson. And see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. And then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green withs which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the widths as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto him, Samson, behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if, if they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto him, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, wherewith thou mightest be bound? And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, and she fastened it with the pin, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass. When she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If, if I be shaven, then my, my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come, pine, come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand, and she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for him for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. 
and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the Philistines be upon thee Samson and he woke out of his sleep and said I will go out as at other times before and shake myself and he was not that the Lord was departed from him this is this is a a, a well known passage of scripture in the church and I have visited it in my own personal study times before and I preached about it some I've had other conversations with other believers about this text and for me it is symbolic as real as it is it is symbolic of what I believe happens to every one of us every Christian every true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and so when I look at the text and when I think about the scripture my heart it goes out I feel for Samson and there is a degree of anger that I have for Delilah and I ask myself the question over and over again even as it applies to my own life how is it that this could happen Uh, so many things so many it seems so simplistic to me it seems so obvious to me it seems so evident that Delilah was up to no good that she had an ulterior motivation an ulterior purpose there was something else going on with her and one would believe that maybe you tricked me once and shame on you but you tricked me twice and shame on me but then you tricked me three times and even a fourth time and I fall to the same old lie and I want to be hard on Samson I, I want I want I want to argue with him I want to fuss at him I want to point a finger at him and, and, and say how could you be so naive and how could you be so simplistic and and and, 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 and you know I, I, I don't get it I don't get it I mean it was was Delilah just so fine? Was she so fair, Brother Mia? Was, was, was she just such hot stuff to wear as she... You let her took you three times. Four times. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I, mean, oh, I, mean, I mean, what what woman could be so attractive to wear as back to back to back to back you fall for the same old tricks I don't think it's attraction sometimes sometimes it's just a tear yeah. <laughs> that always that always gets you so you think that that Samson's weakness here was what was 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 a was a was a, was a tear, but, but but I mean, let, let me let me let me back up because I, I I'm I'm struggling because Samson was a man who had a real relationship with God. It was a real relationship. God had anointed him, and God had empowered him, and he had a family history of having a relationship with God so it wasn't like he was some Johnny come lately it's true that he was a man 
but he had a relationship with God and certainly the value of his relationship with God even to the level of his covenant with God because when you make a covenant with God you, you step into territory that, 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 is, that is, is quite serious as a matter of fact better than to make if a man makes a covenant with God it would be better for a stone to be held put placed on his neck and him thrown into the sea rather than him break his covenant with God God had that relationship with God like God would have given him wisdom to yes so, was he foolish? And, and, uh, uh, well, what was missing? I mean, you have a relationship with God. Look like your value for your relationship with God. And the value of what God is doing in your life ought to be greater than the lie. And the crime. Some people get caught, get 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 caught up. I, I'm, I've been looking at this thing, and I kind of want to break it down. And, and people believe the problem, the problem started, starts when you when you start tempting Satan, when you basically start playing with the devil. You're playing on his on his ground. You're playing into the devil's hand. And you know we can only battle so far with, with Satan. We can't really. We're not even really a match for him. But Samson thought because of his strength. He could he could do this little thing. He thought he could play this game, and he throw him off. He throw him off. But one thing about the enemy, the enemy is consistent. He he not gonna stop. He might go away for a season, but he consistent. And we, we tend to do that. We tend to think we can get in the ring and fight with the devil head up, you know, thinking we winning, but he wearing us down. And we, he wore Samson down. It became a vexation. Well, let, 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 said became a vexation. I, I like that. Vex just his. His flesh and vexed his spirit. Okay, let me, let, let me pause because what you're saying is well said, but I want to kind of graduate to it a little bit more. Uh, first of all, uh, when dealing with temptation, listen, there is no sin in being tempted. And I want to, I want to, I want to prove that by saying that Jesus was without sin, but he was not without temptation. Even prior to him beginning his ministry, after he was prepared and getting ready before he got baptized by John the Baptist, he was laid up into the mountain and then he was fasted 40 days and then, as you all know, he was tempted by the devil. If temptation, if being tempted is a sin, then Jesus cannot have claimed to be sinless. So being tempted is not a sin, but the songwriter said, yield not to temptation, for yielding to temptation is sin. You can't stop the devil from being the devil. However, you still maintain the choice at following after what he suggests. You have the choice. And so not exercising the choice to yield, I mean, exercising the choice to not yield to the temptation is when you pass the test. But too often times we fail the test and end up sinning because we yield to the temptation. I, I, so I'm struggling. Let me first of all say this. In the anatomy of in the breakdown, the makeup of sin and the yielding to temptation, there is a requirement that the person being tempted must be a threat to the devil. You must be a threat to the devil on some level Otherwise, he ain't going to waste time tempting you. You've got to be a threat to the devil. Otherwise, he ain't going to waste time. Now watch this. Sometimes you could be a threat and not even know it. Sometimes you could be a threat. and not, women, women face this. 
limit face. This woman could a woman could just be going about her, her regular routine, going to work, being at work, and then before you know it, some woman mad at you. And you don't know why she mad at you. Come to find out you work with her husband. You ain't even interested in her husband, but he's interested in you. <laughs> you don't even know about his interest. Amen. But the wife oh, yeah. perceives that you are a threat. And now she's up in your face because you are, in her mind, a threat. I'm using that in That's order to true. say you don't know how much of a threat you are to the devil. Yeah. That's so true. You look and you say, well, what can I do? I didn't get a degree from, from, a, from, the, from the seminary. I, I barely can understand some of the words that I read in the Bible. I, I, I'm, I'm not deep like sister so-and-so or deep like brother so-and-so. But you don't know, A, who you are completely in the Lord. Number two, you don't know what God's plans are for you. And, and, and number three, you don't know what effect your little drop in the water is going to have in the long term, the ripple effect. And so the enemy wants to, and I'm just going to be honest with you, if you are saved, the enemy desire is to kill you. Literally kill you. Not symbolically, not just spiritually. He wants to physically kill kill you and the only reason why he has not physically killed you is because God won't let him because any Christian I'm, 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 I'm going to say it, any, any Christian poses a threat to the entire kingdom of the devil to the entire kingdom even, even beyond your local area, even beyond your state, even beyond your nation. One Christian, C.S. Lewis said one time, the world does not know what the effect, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, does not know what the effect of one sold out believer will have on the entire world. And so because you don't know what your effect is, you don't know what God's plans are for you, the enemy better would, 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 would rather just kill you. And because he knows that after you die, you ain't coming back. So you have to be a threat. Now hold on a second. Because the reality is that the devil also tempts unsaved people. Yeah. It's not just limited to the saved. It also applies to unsaved. So why, why would that even be? I mean, I said that you had to be a threat. I qualified that you had to be a threat. But then if you have to be a threat, why, why would he tempt an unsaved person? Because an unsaved person might become a saved person. And so to keep an unsaved person from getting saved, he has to cause that person to be entrapped in as much sin as possible. And so watch this, even when an unsaved person becomes saved, so oftentimes they are compromised by their past. And so, I'm going to load you up with as much sin in your past as possible in hopes that even if you do get saved, somehow I'll be able to come back and use the past against you in the present and hopefully slow down your future. Yes. Now, I, can know, I know and I agree that when you are saved, the Lord wipes the slate clean and, and he forgives you of all of your sin. I understand that, but not all of us get that and so he's able to even come to Christians who know that in the words of Paul I can do all things he is still able to cripple us even after we receive the knowledge with guilt feelings all that other stuff so you must first be a threat to the enemy and then number two the reason why sin the temptation to sin 
is so effective on and let me go back to this and let's I lose the passage in the text the reason why the Philistines were after Samson was because Samson represented the head of the Israelites mm -hmm. and the Israelites were God's chosen people and the Philistines were idol gods and so therefore they were enemies against each other warring back and forward in the Old Testament background and history you'll see Philistines and the Israelites Israelites and Philistines and when you have somebody like Samson who is watch this undefeatable but he is not undefeatable because of his own strength he is undefeatable because of the strength of God in him and so he poses a threat to the Philistine anytime a man take a jawbone and kill a thousand Philistines in one city he's a threat yeah he's he's a threat anytime you can't bind him no a massive army can't hold him back they, he's too strong for that he's too great and look like every challenge he incurred physically he is able to defeat how can you stop a man who God is using him on that how can you stop him You you can't you you can't stop God from fulfilling his purpose and covenant in anybody. But what you can do is you can cause perhaps the man to break the covenant. Here was the covenant. God promised that Samson from birth would have God's anointing and strength with him provided his parents nor himself ever used a razor on his head and God was faithful to that hold on God was faithful to that even when Samson, Samson began sleeping with pagan nation women. So even, watch me, God was faithful to the covenant that he made just as God is faithful with the covenant that he makes to us. God is never going to break his covenant with his people. He's never going to break it. It requires us to break it. God ain't gonna walk out on us. We gotta walk out on God. On God. So, so the covenant here was that I am going to be with you as long as you don't cut your hair. So he becomes an instant threat even from birth. Now, number two, the reason why it is, which is another part of the anatomy of sin or the temptation to sin, is you must, a person must lean on their own understanding and stop acknowledging the Lord in order for the enemy to overcome Samson Samson had to be, get to the point to whereas he was under the belief I got this. I got this. I got this. How do we know that Samson has come to the point to whereas we say that he believed that he felt as though he got this. Uh, 
So, Joanne is saying rather low, but I'm going to kind of speak it up loud. Joanne is basically saying <laughs> that her ability to continue to come to him over and over again is an indication that he believes that he got this. But I want to show you something prior to the beginning of the text at the fourth verse. When you read the background scripture prior to this moment, Samson has had victory on top of victory. Why, why, watch, what I'm, watch what I'm going to tell you. And a part of this victory was, in his mind, he was able to always control, manipulate, and handle Philistine women. He was always able to. He was able to get what he wanted to do. Get. And then he knew that even if somehow he messed up, he could always fix it. At one time he flew around there and, 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 and made a bet about some clothes. And so they got some Philistine women. They got a Philistine woman to go to him and, and basically trick him. He gave the secret up. And so he lost the bet. So what, what he did was, in order to correct him, he went out and killed him from Philistines and took their clothes and paid the bet off. <laughs> now hold on, we, that, 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 that's funny and, and humorous, but I want you to understand this here. Just as God knows everything, don't ever underestimate how much the devil knows. Because he was with Adam. Y'all got, I need you to understand that. He was with Adam and Eve way back. So if he was with Adam and Eve way back in the garden, how you going to trick him? He has studied every man, woman, boy, and girl birth to date. So then, how are you going to, how am I going to trick him? How am I going to outsmart him? He'll throw something on you. God will deliver you. And then he'll turn around and he'll make another move to try to counter what God just did. He is able to take the experiences of Samson and use it against him. Because if I'm always being delivered, if I'm always coming out on top, I get the Superman mentality. And once you get the Superman or Superwoman mentality, you immediately set yourself up for a downfall because Superman and Superwoman have never been shown to my knowledge in the comic books as praying. I don't believe you. I don't I don't think you hear what I'm saying. I've never I, I've never seen in the DC comic book where Superman prayed or where Superwoman prayed. I've never seen that. I've always seen them struggle, I've seen them fight, I've seen them go against odds, but I always see them coming out on top and the whole world applauds and is grateful for Superman and Superwoman. But I never see Superman and Superwoman pray because they are used to being victorious. But he had a weakness. Superman. <laughs> and Superwoman had a whip, uh, weakness of kryptonite. But I was thinking is, in the midst of our successes, we forget all about how weak we are with kryptonite. I can't see the kryptonite. It ain't around me. I'm good. We, 
when all the while the enemy is setting us up. Listen, you got to be very careful. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say this because I think this is very important. You cannot afford as a Christian to lose humbleness, meekness, praise, and glory to God. You can't afford to lose that out of your life because if you do, you're going to start leaning on your own. Understand, you've got to stay humble. I don't care how well you're doing. I don't care what you get. I don't care how popular you are or, or the titles or degrees. Listen, you've got you've got to stay bowed. You've got to stay on your face. You've got to stay before the Lord because as soon as you start to rise, you set yourself up for a fall. That's why when I talk to people one of the first things in my spirit that, 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 that is defined to me is whether or not I sense coming from them humility. Because if you are a child of God, humility ought to always be something that people can see. Not pride, not ego, not puffed up, not selfishness, but humility. A lot of folks see humility as being weakness, but it is your greatest strength in the Lord. D. What you say, Samson's greatest weakness was himself. Samson's greatest weakness was him, was his self. Was his self, as is ours. So you must believe first is you must first be a threat to the to the to, to the enemy in order for him to even come on you with the temptation. And number two, you must believe that you are strong. And and that a part of that is forgetting that all good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. A part of that is forgetting that I move and I have my being by the grace of God. A part of that is forgetting that he is my strength, my peace, my joy, my victory, my happiness. And when you start believing it, that it came from you, then you believe that you are the strong man. Samson was lulled in the text, during the text and before the text tonight, entrusting on his own strength, not just the strength of his muscles, but the strength of his mind. I need you to understand that because therein lies our, listen, let me let me let me let me broaden that. Your faith is not that strong. I, I'm a bold to speak that at this table for everybody. Your faith is not that strong. I don't care how much Bible knowledge you have. I don't care how long you've been with the Lord. I'm bold enough to, to say at this table, your faith is not that strong. The disciples walked with Jesus for three years. And in, in, in the midst of all of that, seeing all of those miracles and hearing the words and, and, and that, Jesus still had to rebuke them multiple times by saying, Oh, you little faith. Now you ain't seen Jesus and you ain't seen him work no miracles on that level in the flesh. And, and, and so I, I, I'm, 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 I'm quick, uh, it's easy for me to say, nobody at this table, your faith is not that strong, baby. Your, your faith is, your, your faith is, listen to me, your faith is not that strong and your mind ain't that good. I need to bring you, I'm bringing all of us back to the point of humility. Your faith is not that strong and your mind is not that good and you don't have much willpower whatsoever. 
I don't either. I'm going to say it again. We don't have that much willpower. You can't even successfully stay on a diet. Uh, uh, you, you, you can't even successfully stay on a diet. And, and so, 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 so how can you talk about your will? Your willpower is not that strong. And listen, your fancy words are not powerful enough to rebuke the devil. You could tell the devil all you want to get away from me. He, he going to look at you and say, if you talking on your own, you have no authority. You have no authority here. I don't care if you are a reverend. I don't care if you are a bishop. I don't care if you are a deacon. I don't care if you are a bishop. It don't matter. You have no authority here. You have no authority over the enemy. None. You are a simpleton. You're not even in the same state with the devil. You're not even in this. Listen, if this we're talking about a school, the devil would have graduated with a PhD and you still a fetus in the womb. You're no ma I'm no match for the devil. But at times I get it twisted. I forget. I think I'm strong. I think I can play. With temptation. Yeah. I do play with temptation. And fall to it as well. Because I am no match. I have no real authority. All I could do is tell him. Look who's behind me. Watch this. If the truth is really told, God covers me and keeps me from temptations I cannot handle. Because the devil knows my weaknesses. You might not know them because I be hiding them. But the devil knows every one of them. And if God does not cover me, and I don't remain under the covering, the devil will send a temptation that I'll fall too swift, swiftly. So I need us to understand that, that a part of the breakdown of sin and us yielding to temptation comes in the fact that we believe we are strong. I don't care how long you've been married. I don't care how faithful you think you are. I don't care how much you say I never cuss. And I don't know how many of us is the people can really say it, but I'm just, I'm just saying. We, 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 we can't. I'm just keeping it real. So uh, keeping it real, I need you to understand, you're not strong. The successes that you've had, the victories that you've had, have not come because you were so good. God did it. Number three. In order for sin to have an effect, Temptation to have an effect on us. We must have an attraction to the temptation. We must have a proclivity, a leaning towards what is being offered. Now watch this. Interesting. Sometimes the attraction is obvious and large. Other times the attraction is subtle and strong. Uh, I need to hear that. Sometimes the attraction is large and obvious. Now I know this is my weakness. I know this is my weakness. I know this is my weakness. I know this is how the enemy can get to me. 
Other times, it is subtle. I don't know it, but it's strong. And I believe oftentimes the subtle ones are the ones that we fall to easiest. Because somebody in here has a subtle but strong fetish for telling people off. Sometimes you have a subtle but strong attraction for messiness and gossip. We haven't really looked at that thing. We haven't really itemized it. We just kind of ease into it. And before you know it, we are enjoying in our flesh mess. Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You know it's true. It's, 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 it's true. And we hide behind the non-obvious nature of it. It's not broadcast. It ain't nobody putting us out on Facebook. It's not being filmed on camera to be putting us on blast in any situation of a large audience. We just, we just we, we, we on the phone fall into the temptation of messiness and we are loving it we are getting away with it nobody is going to find out we put our two cents in because it's a whole hundred dollars <laughs> in the mess and nobody will notice my two cents until God reveals it. Mm. It's subtle but strong. So in order for temptation to have any kind of persuasion on you, it has to have some kind of attraction by your flesh. Otherwise, it has no power. Notice what I said to this. I said the word flesh. But I didn't say the word spirit. Why didn't, why didn't I say spirit, Dave? Because the spirit don't operate like the flesh. Because the God in you Cannot be tempted by the devil. God in you is not even moved by the devil. One of the reasons why that's so is, well, number one, he's God and God all by himself and he's good all the time and all the time he is good and God cannot sin because sin is against God and God is not going to go against himself. So that's the obvious reason. But, but the reason why also it has no temptation is because God sees and knows that every temptation that comes from the enemy is a lie. Mm. On some level, it is a lie. Temptation gives the flesh a lullaby. <laughs> and before you know it, the flesh in you is not sleep, but awake. I need you to catch that. Mm -hmm. The lullaby that temptation sings to the flesh causes the flesh not to go to sleep because the enemy doesn't want your flesh asleep. It wants your spirit sleep so that your flesh could be awake. But it can't have that effect on God because God sees through the lie. And knows that the enemy is up to no good. Because the devil will never be up to good. Because all good and perfect gift come from the Lord. 
It's a lie. And I'm going to tell you, temptation lies to you. It says, oftentimes, you'll get away with it. It's not so bad. You're a strong man. You're invincible. It's going to work out for your good. It lies to you. Temptation lies to you. Your husband will never find out. <laughs> they got they got so much stuff over here they won't they won't miss it if you take some of it. Your wife out of town. You'll never find out. Make sure that you cover your tracks. <laughs> Sometimes you might cover them too, but you still find out. Hold on. But the lie is that you can cover your tracks. Yeah, yeah. That's a part of the lie. You can cover your tracks, but everything done in the dark is going to come to the light. Whatever, man, so that shall he also reap. So hold on. Old folk going to tell you what? If it don't catch you in the washing. It's going to get you in the rinses. And listen to me. No, 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 listen to me. It's true. It's true. There have been things I could swear to you I got away with. Nah. There have been things that I have done that others, in my knowledge, have never found out. But I got it back. Because God don't sleep. And God's word never returns void. So if his word say, if his word said, if you sow it, you're going to reap it. You may not reap it. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. It be, it, listen to me. Listen to me. Saul never lost the kingship. But his children never yeah. reigned. Yes, generational. And wife me. Hold on a second. It's a many mothers and fathers who cry every night because they know they are reaping through their children. I'm telling you, I'm telling you this thing, this thing, this thing is real. You can't play with God, but you don't need to play with sin either. So you must believe that you are strong and flesh must be attracted to it. And, no, and so don't, don't sit in and act like you walk in the spirit of God every day, all day. I mean, I mean the, the reality is you don't, I don't. And I, and I know that you don't because when I deal with some folk in the church, I can tell that ain't the spirit of God. And then when I look at myself in the mirror and I see my members doing things that I know I ought not to do, then I know I'm just as guilty as everybody else. But flesh must have an attraction to it. And your flesh has an attraction to something and or some things. What my flesh is attracted to is not the same as David's. And I can't condemn David's flesh attractions knowing that I got my own. Mm. His is not greater than mine. Because if you, listen, in the Old Testament they said if you break one of the law, you break all of them. So let me go to number four. First one is you must first be a threat to the kingdom. Number two, you must believe that you are strong. And number three, flesh must be attracted to it. And number four, 
in order for temptation to have its greatest effect, it requires, oh, let me just say it, let me, uh, lest I be amiss. Obviously, in the flesh, Samson was attracted to women. We know that he didn't, we are, it, it, it seems rather clear to us that he didn't have an attraction to men. Otherwise, he would have fallen to a Philistine man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he fell to a Philistine woman. So he had a proclivity, a leaning towards not only women, but it seems that he had a leaning toward Philistine women. The one that he should not have been with. Exactly. <laughs> now here's, number, here's the next one. And, 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 and a big one. Sin, temptation has its greatest effect in my own life. This is my testimony. It might be yours too. And I believe it is the case with Samson. Private isolation is necessary. Private isolation is necessary. Sin needs for you to spend some time with it. Temptation needs you to spend some time and with it. The Bible says that we are to run away from a skew, evil, flee from evil, resist the devil, fight it, get away. That's what the Bible tells us to do when it comes down to sin, the temptation of sin. Get away from it. Run away from it. Get away from it. Fast. Hurry. Out of here. Out of here. Get up out of here. Baba knows. Sin says, oh no. You're strong. Let's just talk. <laughs> uh, hold on now. And, and, and sin then begins a dialogue because the reality is when you when tempt in order for temptation to be effective, it has some have some time with you. It has to have some time with you. Uh, it's got to marinate. <laughs> and, when I, and, and listen, I'm not telling you that it has to have some time with your spirit. Because temptation ain't got time for your spirit. Because it knows that's a futile effort. But it needs time with your flesh. So in the process, your spirit is trying to tell the flesh, get out of here. And your flesh is saying, hold on a moment. I want to choose something. I'm, 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 I'm strong enough to, to have this dialogue with temptation. I want you to pause and think about what you know is your de temptation. You ain't got to tell nobody. You ain't got to tell nobody. You don't tell nobody. Don't, you ain't got to tell nobody. God already know it. You know it. And stop trying to fake like you don't have one. So I want you to think about your. I want you to think about your greatest temp. Your your the obvious. I'm, I'm, I ain't talking about the subtle ones. I'm talking about the the obvious temptation. And ask yourself the question: Why is it that obvious temptation in your life is so effective when you know? It's a temptation, and you know it ain't gone. D. When I was real, real young, my grandfather was teaching me about temptation, and he says, Look, see this match? Like, put your finger on that fire, it's going to burn. To me, I don't know. So I wouldn't touch it. You 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 can't you can't listen. It won't temptation wants to have a dialogue with you. It wants to reason with you. The devil is is sitting up there telling you, listen, listen. He's hiding behind invisibility. He's hiding behind the lies. You think you're just talking to yourself. I'm only having a discussion in my own head. Nobody else can tune into this frequency. These are some of the thoughts that I'm just having. I know it ain't right, but ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend David Trainer was preaching the other day, and in the midst of his say he's preaching. Yeah, yeah, this, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's and that's one of those. That's 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 when you know. That's when you know that you are having a private conference with temptation when your flesh says yeah when you start getting these mental images I think I must be the only one up here when you start getting these mental images and you know watch what I'm going to tell you watch what I'm going to tell you if they are strong enough they will stop you at whatever you are doing for the purpose yeah. of thoughts. Uh, and then and then and then and then you hear voices and say, No, I ain't gonna do that. Notice how you said it. Nah, I ain't gonna that ain't right. That ain't that ain't that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't. But that's okay. You, 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 your, your, your so-called willpower is trying to, is, is trying to talk you out of it. But, but you, you already listen. To, and, and then watch what I'm gonna tell you. An opening. Watch what I'm, I'm telling you. An opening is going to come. An opening is going to come, as long as your flesh. Is conversating with temptation. An opening is going to come. Your husband gonna tick you off. <laughs> and the man who listens to you at work. Don't say that. An opening is going to come. You're going to be running low on money. And you'll be trying to figure out how can I get some quick money? I'm going to Marksville. I'm going to Marksville. I'm going to try Lady Luck tonight. <laughs> I don't even have to be running a little bit. Gonna go to the ball. What'd you say? I don't see I don't drink no more. But damn it, I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, True. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. My mind is <laughs> wrapped. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying an opening is going to come, especially if you marinate long enough. So uh, listen, it's a private isolation. It's where the devil does his greatest work. And he comes to you and he breaks you down slowly. It may not happen the first time. You might tell him, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm a married. I'm married. I'm a married man. I ain't a dang. I'm a married man. And, and so you might hear, okay, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand, but if she ever slip, you know, I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, I don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know. Trust me, I know business. So, so the, op the opening is, is you remember, and listen, you be listen. Am I on? Am I the only one? There have been times I'm I'm sitting in the pulpit. In the pulpit, and having a private moment. Of isolation. And hold on, but lest you start thinking that all my moments have to deal with a woman because they don't. I could be having a private isolation moment, marinating on my anger at somebody. I could have a mo I could be sitting in the pulpit marinating on on, on, on on how I'm gonna trick somebody out of something, how I'm gonna get away with something. If it ain't God, it ain't good. 
<laughs> and I've had moments where I wasn't marinating on God nor good. So it's in the private isolationism that when the enemy will break you down. Number five. Yeah. Oh, I need to apply that to the scripture. Obviously, the enemy had carefully selected his weakness to spend time with him. Delilah. Carefully selected and chosen and expressed to Delilah. We need you to do this for country. And, <laughs> and we all we're gonna give you some a lot of money to do this to do this for us. And so she isolates him and begins to now watch what I'm gonna tell you. Here's key number five. I think this is important. A part of the breakdown of sin's anatomy, it requires for temptation to be effective, it requires you to give it a backdoor key. It has to have access to you. And typically, not single access, but the ability to come back again, again, and again. Samson, when he was bound with rope, gave her the key again. Even after the Philistines came up on him and he realized he had rope on him. When she bound his hair, Philistines upon you. Samson rises up. Even after that, he gives her uh, the key again. Ask yourself the question why do you keep giving the key back to temptation? Why do you do that? Why do I why do I keep on returning to the vomit? Like a dog. Why why do I do that? Why do I do that? Hmm, David, I hate to admit it, but in my flesh it does taste good. I keep giving the key back. And sometimes being rude about it. I just go to the house. <laughs> I'm the one pulling up. Hey! I mean, why? Why do you? Why do you? I, us. Why do we do that? Because we always lean on the one understanding. But I know what has happened in the past. It is not like this same temptation has not already a tried to destroy me. I've heard sermons against it. I've read scripture against it. My mama told me, leave that thing alone. <laughs> I've seen what this same temptation has done to others. And here I am giving it a key. David, privately and secretly, I don't want it dead. Yeah, amen. Whew, that was a confession. He 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 never kicks Delilah out. He never kicks Delilah out. That was his passion for women. That was the excerpt that I the excerpt that I that, that, that I I'm, I'm going to include on Facebook deals and talks with the man who portrayed Samson in the Bible series story. Black man, he portrayed Samson. And one of the things that he talks about is, he said, I believe that Samson 
was a man who erred because he followed his passion and not his responsibility. Mm. He followed his passion and not his responsibility. And that's why I'm giving the key over and over again because regardless of what temptation has done to me and regardless of how it has manifested itself in a destructive way in my life I'm following my passion and not my responsibility because if I follow my responsibility as a child of God, if I follow my responsibility as a pastor if I follow my responsibility as the head of my household, as the father of my children, as a role model in my community, if I follow my responsibility, I would never sin. But when I follow my passion, not my father's passion, because my father's passion and my passion are as far apart as the east is from the west. And that's why Jesus wanted us to always embody the prayer that says, nevertheless, not my will. What he was saying was, nevertheless, not my passion. But thy will be done. And he was able to stay focused because he kept his eyes on his role and responsibility and denied the passion that was found in the flesh. Got to move on. So I've given, I've given you five in order for in order for temptation to have victory over us and cause us to sin lies must be either hidden or accepted the truth cannot be embraced i can't i can't fall to temptation and embrace the truth at the same time. I've got to fall and follow a lie. I have to deny the truth because God is the truth and God is what's real and his word is, is where the power is. I've got to deny that and follow a lie. I have to believe that temptation somehow offers me a greater reward than obedience. That just hit me just right there. I have to believe that temptation offers me a greater reward than obedience. I've got to, I, I, I've got, I've got to accept what the enemy is telling me. Even though when I'm walking in the spirit, I can see it's a lie. Because something screams to you, that ain't right. Stop. God ain't happy with that. You know you're wrong. That ain't the right course. That ain't God. That ain't what he told you to do. And you have to somehow look at truth in the face and say, I ain't going to do it. This y'all is what I'm going to do. And you have to believe that what the devil is telling you is real. You ain't going to get caught. <laughs> You'll be able to control it. Control it. You are superwoman. You are superman. Your willpower is strong enough not to let this thing get out of control. You ain't going to be no drunk. You ain't going to be no drug addict. You ain't going to be no gambler. You ain't going to be a hoe. <laughs> you ain't going to be out there bad. You got to believe that. But I'm going to tell you what I've said in the past. Sin is like a, la a ladder. One step leads to another step. And all steps lead to an end. That's number six. You must believe 
in the hidden lie or accept the lie. Number seven. Now this could be a hard one here. In order for temptation to have a chance to really cause you to sin, I'm about to it's gonna sound like a cuss word here. God must allow the temptation. Oh, say, can you see? God must allow Satan to tempt you. Now, I, should I say hallelujah for that? Should, should I say hallelujah? And that's a hard thing for me to think. God has to allow, God has to allow it. Is that really true or does this just sound curious? No, that's true. Is that true? Does God have to, uh, listen, when Job was going through, Satan had to get permission to tempt Job. And he had to get it from God. Now let me give you some hallelujah room. God will not put more on you than you can bear. Not as superman or superwoman, but in him and through him. Grace is sufficient to supply us with all of our needs. When, 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 when uh, Paul asked God to move the thorn out of his flesh, his flesh Paul, God had to let him know, listen, whatever you're going through, I'm good enough to handle it. Now the question becomes, will you choose God? Now, it's not a question for God. It's not a question for God because he already knows. what you gonna do. You don't know what you gonna do. But he knows what you gonna do. Sometimes, in a sense, it's a to us it's a last second choice. I just did it. I just did it. It was wrong. I just, I just, I, I just, it's a spur of the moment thing. I, I was feeling some kind of way. I just did. I knew it was wrong, but I just did. We, we, it's a last, it's a, for us, it's a last second charge, but God already knew it. And, and so I need you to understand as a hallelujah shouting room that even if you do it, God has made a way. It ain't going to stop you from reaping. You still have to reap what you've sown. But God includes all of that in making all things work together for the good of those that love him and who are called according to his purpose. So when you break, when you break down for, for me, as I looked at this scripture text, listen, Samson was allowed by God to be tempted through Delilah. God knew that he was going to fail. And the Bible says, listen to this, that after he fell to the temptation, after they came in and was able to bind him after she had cut off his hair, and they plucked his eyes out because he reaped what he sowed, the Bible says, but then his hair began to grow. And the finality of his life he asked God one more time to be with him so that he could leave a lasting mark to the glory of God. One more victory for the kingdom. And God granted that. For him. And so tonight I, I, I'm hoping that 
in going through this entire discussion. I'm going to go back over these things one more time for those that are taking notes. One, you must be a threat to the enemy in order for temptation to have an effect on you. You must be a threat and don't ever think that you know how big of a threat you are and in some cases we feel like small not much of a threat but somebody preached and Billy Graham accepted Christ somebody preached and taught T.D. Jakes and others don't ever think that you know how widespread the effect of God in your life is going to have. Number two, you must believe that you are strong on your own in order for temptation to be effective. Number three, number, number three flesh must be attracted to it because the devil ain't going to bring you something that your flesh ain't attracted to. Private isolation is necessary for temptation to marinate in you. It's got to have some time to break you down, break you out of God's spirit, get you out of the word, separate you by your own choice. Keys must be given so that they can backdoor you time and time again. Lock the door. If you lock the door and throw away the key, that means kill the flesh. Start praising God because the devil ain't going to come into a house of praise. Yeah, I yeah, ain't catch that, okay. Lies must be hidden or accepted, <laughs> which blocks you from the truth. And finally, God must allow it. Now the last thing I want to ask you tonight is how do I stop temptation from having an effect on me? One Run. Run. <laughs> Run. Run. Two. Pray. Pray. Did I tell you pray? Stay on your face. Stay on your face. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Get ignorant about it. Another way. Stop being so available. Stop. Try. Try. Using the word. In your life as a response to the devil talking in your head. Use the word. If you don't know the word, just start reading. If you don't have a Bible available, just start saying Jesus. Somebody coming up to you, tempting you with something, just look at him and say, I don't know the verse. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, the devils tremble. Yes, indeed. Jesus, just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. I promise you, Jesus will get you out of a lot of stuff. Somebody come in your face being messy. Jesus. 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 It is the sweetest name I know. Yes, it is. Jesus. That's enough right there. That's enough right there. Questions or comments? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, I want to encourage you to accept him tonight. My name is Nonsu Nozier, and I play Samson in the Bible. Well, when I landed the role of Samson, I was over the moon. And it was an amazing opportunity to help tell the story of the Bible. As a Christian, I jumped at the chance. The last time I had been to church before I got the news, my pastor had given me a scripture to read to the congregation, as she often does. And the scripture happened to be Judges and the story of Samson. So I kind of took it as a sign from God that I've got to be part of this show. I think the message that we can take from Samson's story is that no matter how strong you are and successful you are, you can always fall. We all have weaknesses, and um, he was a man of great faith and great strength. But he let his weakness in and took his eye off God for a moment, and that was his downfall. <sighs> Thank you. What is your name? My name is Delilah. He is strong, faithful, and naive. He's a good man at heart, but I think he, the root to his destruction is that he follows his passions instead of his responsibilities. My name's Kirsten Waring, and I play Delilah in the Bible series. Delilah had these two choices, money or love. It's all for you. And at the end of the day, she went for the money. Even though she, she had feelings for Samson and she was in love with him. How does he make you strong? My mother was barren. God brought her a child. Me. But there are things I must not do. Such as? If I cut my hair... I... Oh, my love. What if you cut your hair? My God will take away all my strength. I will be as weak as everyone else.